Struggling to reach Germany through the raging waters and freezing gusts of wind of the Baltic Sea, the cruise liner MV Wilhelm Gustloff made a desperate midnight dash. Her escorts had forsaken her, leaving the 2,000-passenger vessel on her own to deliver 10,000 German refugees away from the unrelenting Soviet advance on Eastern Europe. Aware of the atrocities Soviet forces inflicted upon the Germans, the refugees traveled furtively through the enemy-infested waters while the cruise liner kept her lights off. However, the darkness forced the crew to turn on the searchlights, and the dazzling lights soon attracted the attention of Soviet submarine S-13. Then, while the fear-struck passengers listened, as Hitler made a hopeless last radio address to the nation urging the population to resist, the enemy vessel fired three torpedoes right at them. A reflection of its time. It could be said that MV Wilhelm Gustloff's career mirrored Germany's rise and fall during World War II. In the early days of the war, as Germany conquered Europe in an almost unstoppable series of military triumphs, Wilhelm Gustloff served as a luxury cruise ship for the German labor front, taking Nazi workers on leisure trips around Europe as a reward for their sacrifice. However, as the conflict's fate turned increasingly dire for the Wehrmacht, relaxation programs had to be abruptly canceled, and luxury civilian ships were recommissioned and turned into hospital vessels. MV Wilhelm Gustloff served as a hospital ship until November of 1940, when increased pressure by the Allies blockading the German coasts forced them to turn the cruise liner into a barrack ship. The vessel would support approximately a thousand U-boat trainees of the second submarine training stationed at the port of Gdynia, near Danzig, in what is Polish territory today. During her role as a barracks facility for German submarine servicemen, Wilhelm Gustloff remained in port for over four uneventful years, serving at one point as a background ship for a German movie depicting the tragic sinking of the Titanic. By early 1945, Germany's stance in the war had become hopeless, and the Soviets were advancing west at an increasingly accelerated pace, while the German troops defending Eastern Europe were offering less and less resistance to the Red Onslaught. The Nazi regime had postponed the evacuation of civilians from Eastern Europe as much as possible, in a reckless attempt not to demoralize the already depleted German forces in the area. But as stopping the Red Army became increasingly unlikely, and German citizens began to learn about the massacres in the hands of the Soviets, the pressure to evacuate became unbearable. Thus, Operation Hannibal was launched in mid-January, and it would become the largest sea evacuation in history. A Massive Exodus the massive evacuation of Germans from Eastern Europe had to be done by sea, as the Soviets had attained control of most land routes and the ever-advancing front line was too risky and costly. Former luxury cruise liner Wilhelm Gustloff was thus transformed into an evacuation vessel, as it was commissioned to serve under the Operation Hannibal Initiative. At first, German commanders attempted to execute an orderly evacuation. Numerous ships, including MV Wilhelm Gustloff, would make port in Kurland, East Prussia, and Danzig, West Prussia, to load passengers and take them to Germany through the Baltic Sea. The refugees, who mainly consisted of military personnel and their families, were required to buy tickets and await boarding at the port. However, as more and more desperate Germans crowded the docks and the Red Army loomed ever so closer, chaos ensued. In later trips, the crew of MV Wilhelm Gustloff could hardly contain the thousands of desperate refugees trying to leave, as people would force themselves onto the ship, preceding any registration procedures. As hell broke loose and the window to escape began to close, the German High Command realized how massive the evacuation was turning out to be. In total, Operation Hannibal evacuated between 800,000 and 900,000 German civilians and 350,000 soldiers to Germany and German-occupied Denmark. Around 494 military vessels and 1,080 merchant ships, including fishing boats and other civilian vehicles, were used in the erratic escape scheme, drastically overshadowing the scale of the British evacuation of Dunkirk a few years prior. Ambushed at Sea MV Wilhelm Gustloff had been entirely overwhelmed by refugees, and it didn't have any free space aboard, with estimates putting the number of passengers at around 10,000. The ship departed from Gotenhafen at 12.30 p.m. on January 30, 1945, accompanied by the passenger liner Hansa 
and two torpedo boats meant to escort the defenseless cruise ships. The night was cold, and the sea grew restless as the crew debated whether to take the ship along the coast all the way to Germany and risk striking a submarine mine or traverse through the deep waters while hoping to avoid the attention of Soviet submarines. There were four captains aboard the cruise ship, Wilhelm Gustloff's captain, the captain of the U-boat complement housed on the vessel, and two merchant ship captains. The submarine commander argued that taking the deep waters would undoubtedly increase the risk of the ship being intercepted, while Friedrich Peterson, the cruise liner's commander, wanted to avoid the shallow waters and the numerous mines in them. In the end, Peterson decided that the shallow waters offered the most significant threat, and if they kept a low profile and sailed with the lights turned off, it would be unlikely that a submarine would spot them. Besides, even if they were spotted, they were on a civilian refugee vessel, and they would hardly present a threat to a Soviet warship. Midway through the Baltic Sea, Hansa and one of the torpedo boats developed mechanical problems and had to stop for repairs, but Wilhelm Gustloff and the other torpedo boat decided to continue. The faster they moved, the sooner everyone would be safe. Soon, Peterson received a mysterious radio message, warning that there were, in fact, mines in the deep waters ahead. The crew was then forced to turn their lights on and try to spot the explosive traps before they crashed into one of them. It is still unclear why, but the other torpedo boat decided to rush ahead and leave the cruise ship behind, perhaps trying to scout for mines or look for a safer route. Alas, Wilhelm Gustloff was left by herself. Forsaken amid the freezing and agitated waters of the Baltic Sea, the mighty ship was a sitting duck, blatantly announcing her presence with the help of her searchlights. Suddenly, the refugee ship spotted Soviet submarine S-13, which then began to trail her while waiting for a chance to attack. Catastrophe Captain Alexander Marinesco was a reckless and alcoholic officer who had been reprimanded on numerous occasions for his behavior and unbecoming attitude. By the time he encountered Gustloff, he was facing a court-martial for his recurring alcohol problem. Having little to lose, and eager to prove his worth while avenging the Soviet people, he decided to claim the cruise liner that now sailed before him as his prize. Presumably, Marinesco realized that Wilhelm Gustloff was not a warship, and he probably suspected it was carrying refugees. But the vessel was no longer appropriately marked as a hospital ship, and soon Marinesco gave the order to fire. The submarine fired three torpedoes at the port side of the vessel, with the projectiles engraved with vindictive messages. One said for the motherland, the second one said for Leningrad, and the third for the Soviet people. The first torpedo struck the ship's bow, causing watertight doors to seal off the area where off-duty crew members were sleeping. The second hit the women's naval auxiliary accommodations, causing massive casualties. And the third one managed a direct hit on the engine room, and all power and communications were disabled. Thousands of passengers lost their lives from the torpedo explosions alone, but the disaster was just beginning, and the ship began to sink rapidly. Meanwhile, the huge crowds aboard the cruise liner panicked and violently rushed for the lifeboats. It is estimated that most casualties occurred in brutal stampedes as the desperate passengers crushed one another. Still, there were only enough lifeboats to accommodate 2,000 people. And to make matters worse, many of the boat's release systems were frozen, delaying the escape of the people that were able to reach them. The ship then abruptly tilted to the port side, rendering the lifeboats on that side of the ship useless. Realizing that there would not be enough boats to save them, hundreds of people then started to jump off the ship's deck into the frigid waters of the Baltic Sea. Chaos then ensued as the people on the water desperately tried to cling to the lifeboats that had made it down. But to avoid being capsized, those in them were forced to use their oars and push the desperate survivors away. Thousands of passengers then froze in the algid waters, while servicemen aboard the sinking ship used their weapons to take their own lives and those of their loved ones. The whole ordeal lasted for an hour when MV Wilhelm Gustloff wholly sank. German ships quickly rushed to the scene to rescue survivors while avoiding being dropped by the Soviet submarine. But despite the rescue efforts, most people had perished. Even those aboard the lifeboats had succumbed to the merciless cold. Ultimately, less than a thousand people survived, and the sinking is considered the greatest maritime tragedy in human history to this day. Thank you for watching our video. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, 
And for more history-inspired stories, don't forget to subscribe to all of our Dark Documentaries channels and hit the bell icon to be notified when a new video comes out. Stay tuned.